Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. I'm told that if you visit a Benedictine Abbey, every morning, every noontime, and every evening, there is a prayer. And the prayer goes something like this. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. And that prayer is said every day, three times a day, throughout the year, except in the season we're now in. In some traditions, this is the Sundays after Pentecost. Some traditions, it's the Sundays after Trinity. Some traditions, we call this ordinary time. The green, ordinary time. The green, growth. And it's during that time that the prayer changes a little bit. But I think it changes a lot. Listen to the prayer said during these days. In the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns and celebrates life with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Did you catch something in there? The second line. Who lives and reigns and celebrates life. You see, this season, this ordinary time, this season of Pentecost, this green time is about living. It's about life. It's about who we are. It's about who we have been, and it's about who we have become. The last line out of today's second lesson has always had a very special meaning in my life. Remember how it goes? What's the last line? Anybody know it? You ain't paying attention to what was read? Wait a minute here. Do you have the second lesson? Do I have the second lesson? Yeah, do you have the second lesson there? Yeah. What do you want to know? I want to know the last line. Oh, okay. Oh, Nobody okay. else knows it, so you, uh, you have it. You have it written down. I know it, but I'm not about to say it. Yes, read it. That's all right. You didn't know I was going to do this anyway. That's that old prophet stuff. That's it. Once more. <laughs> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. If anyone in is in Christ, the old has passed away. The new has come. Do you believe it? Do you believe that's what happens in your life? Do you believe that's what has happened in your life? Maybe for some of you, it was at a baptismal font like this when you were an, a child. Maybe for some of you, it was much older in your life. Do you believe that the old has passed away, but the new has come? And if you do, do you live it? Uh oh. I want to take you back. Let me see. That was about 1978. That's way back for old prophets. It's a long time ago. When I was first given the privilege 
to serve as an intermittent chaplain at the VA hospital in Baltimore. Little did I know that when I went into that 1978 that I would serve there for 22 years, but little did I know. And every time and every week, what an intermittent chaplain was for all of you, those of you that don't know, would go in on the days when the chaplain was off. So there was always coverage in the hospital. And that chaplain at the hospital to VA there happened to take Fridays and Saturdays off. <laughs> so now you know when I worked, Fridays and Saturdays. It was very good, it was a very interesting experience for me, and I have to readily admit, this is history for me, never served in the military, but here I am serving all these military individuals. I learned a lot. I experienced a lot. And probably one of my greatest experiences there was a group that used to meet on Saturday morning. It met from 10 to 11 a.m. every Saturday morning like clockwork. If I tell you the name of the group, some of you will know it, some of you will not know it. Some of you may have experienced it, some of you may have not. The group's name was Alcoholics Victorious. Now you've all heard of Alcoholics Anonymous. How many of you have heard of Alcoholics Victorious? No one. Boy, I do feel old. Alcoholics Victorious was the group that followed everything that Alcoholics Anonymous follows, except they defined who their higher power was. Three guesses as to who their higher power was. Jesus Christ. It was fascinating for me, and I look back at it, that every Saturday these gentlemen gathered, and of course they had to have their coffee and donuts. You know. But there they gathered, struggling with life, knowing the things that had happened to them, but they were there for each other. And some weeks, they were all there. Some weeks, half of them were there. Some weeks, some didn't show up for a long period of time. But they were there for each other. And the theme verse of Alcoholics Victorious is, guess what? If anyone is in Christ, the old has passed away, the new has come. And they taught me a lot. They taught me what it meant, that verse meant. In personal, individual lives, as well as a caring group. There was never a time when somebody who had been gone for weeks, and they knew why, came back, and it was as if as though they were never gone. They were there for them. They cared for each other. They supported one another. Because they said, if they were in Christ, there was a new creation, the old had passed away. Now let me ask you something. You got anybody in your life that knows all your foils and foibles and all those other kind of things? Husbands, wives, parents, children, friends. You know those people? I don't know if we sometimes come, what is that thing with this? The letters, be very best friend or something. I, I, can, I can never get the alphabet straight anyway. But they know all about us, and yet they're there for us. As I remember from that group, and I'm sure all of you have them as husbands, wives, parents, and children, if suddenly in the middle of the night something is needed and you call them, guess what? They're there. Guess what? 
They know all those things about you that nobody else you want to know about you, but they still what? They still love you? They still care for you? If anyone's in Christ, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That's what Paul is talking about in 2 Corinthians today. Yeah, he talks about this body thing and, you know, being in the body and out of the body. And some people want to get carried away with Paul and say, is he kind of off on a tangent somewhere here in the body? Paul is talking about an experience to the church at Corinth, which was not exactly the best example of a church. They had lots of struggles. They had lots of things going on there. There were things that Paul just couldn't deal with or wanted to deal with with them. But guess what? Paul understood that because they were in Christ, they were a new creation. The old had passed away. Behold, the new had come. And he could speak to them. He could say to them, really, I've been there. But he not only says, I've been there, he says, you know what? It isn't going to be easy from now on. Look at my life, Paul says. Remember life's, Paul's life? Where did it start? On a road? Who did he meet? Jesus. And what happened from that point on? The old had passed away. Behold, the new And what brings it all together for St. Paul is where we find ourselves. Paul could say that because he said Christ suffered, died, rose again, and lives. He's not talking about some dead guy that suddenly taught some kind of stuff and isn't around anymore. He's not talking about some kind of philosophy that was written long time ago and doesn't have any existence. He's talking about Christ himself living and reigning to this very day. If anyone is in Christ, the old has passed away and the new has come. Wow. Do you and I understand what that means for us as a community of faith? Now, some of you can say to me, well, a couple of weeks ago, I think the old passed away and the new came. The old was there were two congregations. The new, there's one. And you're all united because of Christ. Because of his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. That's what makes us who we are. That's what makes us care. That's what makes us go out of our way. If somebody calls us in the middle of the night, that's why we respond. If somebody asks us to do something, that's why we respond. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Because, let's see if I can get you to do the Easter verse. Christ is risen. He is risen. That sounds great. That's why we are who we are. That's why Paul could write what he wrote. Paul understood that life does change with Christ. It isn't the same. It's new. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And our challenge is to live it every single day of our lives. Not just on Sunday morning, not just at the appropriate time, but every moment of our life. That finally helped me to understand, as difficult as it is for us as Lutheran Christians to sometimes connect to our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, there is something that Luther did every morning when he got up. The very first thing. And those of you that have catechisms, look in your catechism and see what it says. In the very morning when you get up, 
the very first thing you do when you open your eyes is make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to remind you whose you are. Every morning, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That's what you all are. That's who you all are. That's what this congregation is now and will be because of the gift of Christ. So I wrote it a little different way. Declare that the old life has passed and God's new life has already come in your heart and in your mind and in your being. That's his gift. And that's his gift simply because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.